the race that we have probably focused the most on, and I think the national media has as well, and I think for some good reason, is Pennsylvania. You know, Pennsylvania, right now, that seat is held by a Republican. So if Democrats are able to pick that one up, that makes the Republican task a little bit harder. You know, they have to be able to pick off one of these um, other states in order to be able to secure their Senate majority. Uh, Biden and Obama obviously see the state as key as well. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen. They are planning to campaign together in Philadelphia on Saturday. I did a whole thing yesterday on Obama back out on the campaign trail and also the notable lack of Biden on the campaign trail, which has been very different from his predecessors. You know, even Obama back in 2010, when he was under a lot of fire and his approval rating was similarly not great. Uh, he was out there on the campaign trail. Of course, Trump loves doing rallies. He'll do them every chance he possibly gets. So, of course, he did a lot of campaigning and is doing a fair amount of campaigning for Republican candidates this time as well. Biden has not done much at all. And in fact, one of the places he went was a little strange. He went to Florida to back up Charlie Crist, who's like in a doomed race against Ron mm -hmm. DeSantis. I was like, OK, I don't know why you're spending your time doing that, but whatever. He's done some Zoom events, but this will really be, you know, the big marquee event. I think Biden still thinks he's got that like Scranton Joe Pennsylvania touch. They clearly see Pennsylvania as central to their chances. They clearly understand Fetterman is, you know, kind of on the rocks or on the ropes that his polling has been sliding here down the stretch. And so they, you know, want to go and see what they can do to garner as much enthusiasm among the Democratic base as possible and urge them to turn out at the last minute. Yeah, I mean, I question whether it's, I mean, here's the issue with Obama. He has never shown any capability at actually transferring his own personal Correct. popularity Correct. to Democratic victory. Yes. 2010, 2012, <clears throat> uh, 2016. I, I've done several monologues, I think, uh, playing that last clip of him from the 2016 election where he's like, this, you know, X is on the ballot. I'm on the ballot. I may not, be, my name might not be on there. I'm on the ballot. And he asked me, he took it to the American people. He said, you need to vote as if my name. And it's like, well, they did. So you know, it, it didn't turn out to work out so well. So he might be a popular figure amongst Democrats. But again, we have reams of data to tell us that he has never once been able to transfer his personal popularity. Yeah. On Biden, it's a negative popularity. He's underwater by almost two thirds in the state of Pennsylvania for his approval rating. If I was Fetterman, I wouldn't even want to look on the same stage as him. I was actually surprised in one of the few you know, moments like it was kind of clear out of the Fetterman debate is remember they asked him, they're like, would you support Joe Biden for president? And he said, if he chooses to run again, I would I would support him 100%. Well, Pennsylvania of the swing states is the one where Biden continues to have the highest approval rating. Now right. it's low, it's, low. it's 42%. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I think that's the reason why if he was going to go to any of these states, he would think that Pennsylvania was the spot. And like I said, I think, you know, he has this self-image, self-conception of like Scranton Joe and in touch with the working class and the white working class in particular. So they're going to Philadelphia um, with the thought of, you know, we'll really turn out the uh, Philadelphia, like the urban core and the suburban vote that is increasingly, you know, what Democrats rely on. And then at the same time, Trump is going to be doing on that same day on Saturday a rally in the western part of yep. Pennsylvania, um, which is a place, you know, he feels like is really behind him and where people, you know, turned out that hadn't turned out in a long time to vote for him in 2016 and uh, in 2020 again. It's kind of a potential preview, potential little 2024 preview. Um, and I think the expectation is, you know, uh, Trump may announce his presidential run fairly quickly after the midterms. We'll see. Biden will probably get in after the holidays. So this may be a, a little bit of a, a preview of the presidential race that the rematch that no one wants, but we're probably going to get anyway. That one. That's what we're going to get a preview of this weekend. There were some interesting numbers, Sagar. I'm curious what you mm -hmm. make of them in that New York Times Siena poll about uh, Pennsylvania and how people feel about Fetterman's health in particular. You had a plurality of voters saying Fetterman was not healthy enough to do the job after uh, the debate Wednesday night. So most of their calls happen before the debate. Right. And overall, only a little over a third said he's not healthy enough to perform the duties of the job. 
of it's very partisan. Republicans, a majority, 71 percent have concerns about his health. Well, they weren't voting for him anyway. Majority of Democrats, 83 percent say he is healthy enough to do the job. But there does seem to have been somewhat of a shift. So it's still not a majority, but a plurality, they say, in the calls they made after the debate, now expressing concerns about his health. So I, I, look, I wish it would matter. I just don't think it does. <clears throat> I really don't. And I'll tell you why, which is that a lot of these Dems, highly partisan Dems, they were going to vote anyway. You mm. know, most of these people not even vote anyway. They probably already voted early voting. You know, Pennsylvania and the way that the mail-in ballots and all that have been working, most of that has been sent in. Republicans, they were going to turn out against. At best, it might have an impact on day of vote to the extent that that matters. We are actually, unfortunately, seeing major polarization in America on how people vote. Many Republicans are dragging themselves to the polls in person right. on election day, specifically because they've been told they can no longer trust mail-in balloting. So were they really, is it going to really impact the way that people vote on election day? Of course, I'm not a psychologist. You know, I have no idea how these things are going to play. In general, I think that his position on crime and or his... Uh, ties to Joe Biden on the stage are going to matter tenfold more than the actual. I mean, that's always, I mean, this is the candidate quality on the Democratic yeah. side question, right. right? And to be honest with like, and I've said this before, Herschel Walker, you know, with all his issues and his lies and the hypocrisy and all of that, I understand if you're someone who's like, no, abortion is my issue. So I really don't care yeah. if he's, you know, Correct. has CTE or whatever issues or is a liar or whatever. Like he's going to vote the way I want him to vote. And I want Republicans to be in control. I don't think that that is, um, I don't think I, that makes some sense to me. Yeah. Like, I don't think that is illogical. And I think it's the same thing with Fetterman here. It's going to be much more. And this is ultimately except for this one instance, this is ultimately better for Republicans. I don't think that candidate quality is as important as whatever the national mood ultimately is, which is why I continue to think that um, Democrats are likely in for a rough night. But I just want to couch all of it saying, I really don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like so humble at this point about making any predictions <laughs> of how this is all going to unfold. We've seen so many polling misses. We live in such chaotic times. Um, it's just really hard to analyze any of these races with any level of certainty about what is ultimately going to happen. So listen, going back to the beginning, New York Times has polls that look pretty decent for Democrats. You factor in the uh, misses from last time around and you basically once again have a total jump ball for the Senate. And so I think that's basically where we are. There, I, I concur. Look, I mean, if I had to bet, I'd put money on the Republicans. That being said, been wrong a lot. Uh, elections are crazy. Americans have a way of always surprising us on election day. Mm -hmm. That's honestly why I love I love covering it. Yeah. You know, anytime you'll cover it and you see returns out of South Texas for Trump and you're like, holy shit, I didn't even, it's like one of those things where you're like, I didn't think this was possible. Yeah. It's cool that it is. I love living here. By the I way, really uh, we are yeah. going to be doing live yes. election night yeah, coverage here. So stay tuned for details on that. We'll have, um, it'll be us, Ryan and Emily will be here. Sagar, uh, you are yes. Sagar, yes. Kyle and Marshall. <laughs> The My full, other man. The full crew is here. <laughs> My other co-host will all be on, uh, on deck here to analyze whatever the hell happens that night. So it should be fun regardless of the outcome. Yep, absolutely. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.